Senator Durbin, you had something interesting to say as you listened to Mr. Romney speaking there. Keep talking. Just keep talking. <laughs> Help what, us. What is your what? your former colleagues, uh, President Obama and the White House, where are they right now as they watch this race play out from the sidelines? I remember Bill Daly, who managed the Gore campaign, was asked what he learned. He said, I learned one thing. By the end of the presidential campaign, the American people know who you really are. Right. Mm. What we see in the Republican contest 20 debates, and now they've said no more, no more exposure, please, is people know who these candidates really are. They know Mitt Romney now. They know Newt Gingrich, and they certainly know Rick Santorum. They are out of, I guess, the mainstream position from a Democratic point of view. The polls reflect the fact that more exposure for Romney is not helping. He's falling further and further behind. As the, the Republican governor of Maine said recently, we need a fresh face. We need another Although, alternative all right. to the three who are here. That would mean a brokered convention. And would that be good or bad? It's well, not likely to happen. In, in this day and age, not likely. When you consider the limited amount of time that would be left, the amount of money that needs to be raised, the organization that needs to be put together. But you can tell there is a roiling in the ranks of the Republicans. They don't they don't think they've found the one candidate yet that would represent them or could defeat President Obama. All the focus is on the Republican side, which is understandable. That's where the circus is right now. But on the Democratic side, you've got a real reality that you must be wrestling with, which President Obama's not raising nearly the amount of money he raised in 2008. He raised about $140 million so far. He raised almost three quarters of a billion dollars last time. He, I mean, it's not clear what his message is. What's the message for the second term? It's, you know, re-elect President Obama, things could be worse. I mean, no. that's effectively what he's arguing. No, it's not at all. Do, do you believe the campaign in 2012 is as strong an organization as it's the campaign in 2008? It's a much different campaign, and it's different. I think it focuses on one basic thing. For 23 straight months, we have had economic growth in this country. For five straight months, we have seen the unemployment rate go down. We want to continue this positive movement in the economy, creating jobs and helping businesses keep jobs right here in America. And we don't really want to return to the Bush economic doctrines that brought us into the recession. Very basic message. And when it comes to the other cultural issues, the president is in a mainstream position here in terms of what he believes on issues as basic as women's health care and rights of privacy mm -hmm. that Americans really value in this country. And as the Republicans keep talking, they're losing the center. That's where the president is gaining ground. All right. We still have Andrea Mitchell with us in Washington. Andrea, you're next. But first, I just want to show the senator this Gallup USA Today poll, which shows President Obama's health care mandate is hurting his chances at reelection. And factor this into the conversation. 30 percent of those surveyed say they are much less likely to vote for Obama because of the bill, while 15 percent say they are much more likely to vote for him because of it. So there is, there are some weak areas. I, I, I mean, they may be looking at the situation confidently now, but I would suggest carefully as well. Of course, it's, uh, it's a situation we're taking nothing for granted. Uh, happy to be a co-chair of the campaign, and I believe we're moving in the right direction. 45% of the president's contributors are new contributors, people who've never given before. He has more volunteers who've uh, signed up this year than he did even four years ago. We are moving with an organization below the radar at this moment in the battleground states and issues like health care. Mm -hmm. Give me one or two follow-up questions. I'll turn that poll for you. When I say to people, do you think as a family you would like to keep your child fresh out of college looking for a job under your family health insurance plan until they reach the age of 26? Of course. They're still looking for jobs. And how about your babies, the children under the age of 18? Should they be discriminated against because of pre-existing conditions? Of course not. But Dick, don't you think that the fact that you're having and explain that now. Doesn't that show the weakness? I think the administration's done a very good job, but I think their messaging during this last three and a half years has been terrible. People don't understand that. Would People you agree have no with that, clue. Senator? I, I, I'll tell you, it was a major effort, an historic effort toward health care reform that include many things. When you, Ed, when you get down to particulars, you know the story here. There's an image that's created, but you get down to particulars, and people say, I'm not giving up on that. If you're going to close the donut hole, seniors say, that's what we want. Well, that's part of health care reform. Now yeah. are you for it? Yes, some for Right, but why do people not understand that that's in the program? They're learning, and what? they will learn more. And believe Boy, me, the it's late to be learned. But Ed, let me tell you something. The president has not been on the air yet. Uh, the airwaves have been dominated by the Republican message uh, makers, and we will have our day. We'll have it when it's closer to the election, when the impressions that are created will have an impact on the final vote. But in 2010, and, 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 congressional members were running, Democrats were running. Not a single one ran an ad. Ran an ad. 
based, be, defending the vote for health care reform. And he spent a, a lot of money. And it was a mistake. And it was a mistake. I think let's, we should have been much more forced. Let's go to Andrea Mitchell in Washington. Um, Andrea, the uh, Republican candidates are certainly blasting the president for apologizing for the Koran burnings. This is, there are, we got a long slog ahead, but it certainly seems like the president has the upper hand right now. Well, the president may take some confidence in Senator Durbin. I'm sure that you Democrats in the Senate take a lot of confidence from the way the Republican campaign has evolved into debates over contraception and whether college is a good goal for, for American kids. But what about those events like Afghanistan, like gasoline prices, which are global events over which the president has so little control? Doesn't he have a lot of challenges uh, going ahead, going forward? as the commander-in-chief and as the incumbent. Andrea's right about that. But let me get back to basics. I had plenty of differences with President George W. Bush. The one thing I thought he did, which really came through loud and clear, even after the tragedy here in New York and 9-11, he said, our war is not against the religion of Islam. Our war is against those who would distort it and use it for terrorism. I thought it was an important statesmanlike position that he took, the same position President Obama is taking. Now look at the three Republican candidates scurrying to go to these talk shows on Sunday to try to say, well, we're really going to have, have broaden this battle. The, 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 the inflammatory rhetoric from Newt Gingrich, which just continues on a regulatory regular basis. President Obama is showing leadership at a time when people want it. He is trying to calm a dangerous situation when we have American troops whose lives are at stake. That is what a leader does in foreign policy. Doesn't run off and inflame the situation in the hopes of winning a few points back home, number one. Number two on gasoline prices, couldn't disagree with Andrea Moore. Hmm. At this yeah. point, I would say, I was back home all last week, gasoline prices dominated the conversation. Yep. They went up 20 and 30 cents a gallon in one week. And people said, what's going on? But when the president talks about holding oil companies accountable, the ending their federal subsidy, I think most people say that is a reasonable position to take. Senator, this has been and continues to be a terrible week in Afghanistan. So I'll just ask you very bluntly, why are we in Afghanistan? I voted against the invasion of Iraq. There were 23 of us, one Republican, 22 Democrats. I voted for the invasion of Afghanistan, not for the longest war in American history, but to eliminate Al-Qaeda, to go after Osama bin Laden. That was my goal, I think the goal of most of us. And now at this moment in time, there's not much left of Al-Qaeda, just in shards around the world, and Osama bin Laden is gone. History has taught us about Afghanistan. There's only one thing that brings them together, a foreign presence that unites those tribes. And at this right. point, we are the outside force. So Dick, do you think we should expedite our withdrawal? The I think the we better. should get out now. The sooner the better, Ed. I think the president's right. Start bringing the troops home. I would say to him, do it more quickly. More quickly. Senator Dick Durbin, thank you very much. It's always good to see you. Great, thanks. Coming up from